the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A disciple is not above the teacher. It came to mind today as I was reading tender Father's Day tributes on Facebook. It was as I was scrolling through the photographs that one in particular had me standing still in memory. And I'm remembering now what seems to be the last time I saw him. I had pulled into the driveway at their old farmhouse. I could see Larry standing at the kitchen door, his hair now gone from his battle with cancer. Head down, my heart caught in my throat, I made my way to the back steps. We stood in Larry's kitchen and visited a while. When I left, he said to me, You know, I'm not afraid. George taught me how to do this. He was speaking then of our precious friend, whose dying we had grieved together not too long before. It was a couple of years before this, with my visit with Larry. It was a Saturday in August, too many years ago now, when, we, when he and I met up and traveled together to see George to plan his funeral. I can't recall now 
if he knew then what would happen. We only knew time was growing short and one more visit wouldn't wait. So we talked about music that day and scripture, about who would sit at the organ bench and who would fill the pulpit. George knew what he wanted. Near the end of our visit, he exclaimed, Oh, how I wish I could be there. With tears standing in his eyes, Larry replied, Oh, but you will be. Not all dying is done with such gratitude and grace. It can and often does get messy along the way. Even so, I find I look to these who have taught me, and I expect that however it is, however it will be for me, it will only be sketchy approximations of their examples. And yet, I keep striving. We keep striving, don't we? Jesus says in today's gospel that the disciple is not above the teacher, that it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher. Indeed, as we seek to learn from him, following him, we can expect the same fate to be ours that you and I need not go seeking our deaths, for they will surely come, both large and small, as we emulate his example. We only need to look to Jesus to know what to expect. We can look to Jesus, too, to see how it can be done, there is a great deal that is frightening in the words before us now. None of it sounds pleasant. Much of it promises to be painful. In spite of Jesus urging us to not be afraid, I confess that often I am. If I'm honest, I have to say I wish it didn't have to be the way it is described in Matthew's gospel today. And yet I know there is no choice. Not in the world we are called to live and die in, where so many powerful forces work against good and healing and hope. These are hard words before us, especially now in these troubled times. And yet, this much I know, there are powerful words of promise interlaced with the rest. For we are reminded that God loves common sparrows, so mustn't he love us as well? We know that God loves us, that even the hairs on our head are counted. That is how intricate God is intertwined with us. For me, the most powerful words of grace and comfort come at the start when we hear that we do have a teacher, a master, whose fate not only serves as warning for all of us who follow him, but inherit in the image itself. The certain promise is that our teacher and master, Jesus also goes before us to show us the way. In ways so much more profound than even those I look to in this life to teach me, we follow one who already did this. As we are told today, it is only in this way 
that we who somehow lose our lives for Jesus' sake will find life. Too many years ago now, in far too close succession, I stood by as witness to see Larry and George embrace an unknown future in their dying. I still carry their examples deep within me. I remember how they expressed their gratitude in the face of their own grief and fear. And I remember the peace that held them then. We are blessed to have such companions on our journey. And yet, even as one taught the other how it was to be done, They both had their eyes and hearts fixed on another teacher whose example we are all privileged to carry deep within us. I pray this will also be so for me one day in my actual dying. May it also be so today as you and I seek to live. Indeed, may you and I say over and over again in our dying and in our living, you know, I'm not afraid. Jesus taught me how to do this. Amen.